I think that's why I'm fairly... Stay tuned. Later, we'll return in a moment. But Vivian, you have to come to dinner. I mean, you accepted the invitation three weeks ago. Look, out with it, Vivian. Now, what have I done that's making you behave this way? You've been avoiding me all week. You won't even talk to me on the phone, and now you say you're not coming to dinner. And Viv, I made our favorite. Beef stroganoff. Yeah. Like I always do, Vivian, because, because you love it. Because you always ask for it. What do you mean you're sick of it? <laughs> Listen, Vivian, your behavior... Vivian, don't hang up! Pa Vi <laughs> well, at least I don't have to eat that damn beef stroganoff. <laughs> How long was, was Maud on the air? Six years. And in the top ten for a good portion of that, of that time. Yes, and people yes. might forget that Maud was more than um, a successful show in terms of where it was in the ratings. It was, it was kind of a national uh, fad is probably the wrong word, but it made an impact. People talked about Maud. If you said Maud in the office, people yeah, knew what you were yeah. talking about. Well, mainly, of course, it was along came Norman Lear, who really changed the whole face of uh, television sitcom or whatever you call it, with All in the Family. Mm -hmm. And Maud was really, in a way, a spinoff. She was that. Archie Bunker's and, cousin. Yeah, and uh, Norman always dealt with... Funny as things were, they always had to have some basis and some human frailty or some human need. Or, and so we, we did it. I mean, we broke all the taboos. I had the, first, uh, had the first abortion on TV. I had the first facelift on TV. We talked about homosexuality. We talked. There was nothing that we didn't discuss. At and 47, I guess, was Maud's age at yes. the time of the uh, abortion yes. episode. And that, she... Yes, but one of the reasons we chose was the fact that she felt she was too old to properly raise a child. Raised a hell of a lot of furor. A yeah, hell of a lot that's of what I was going to ask about. But I will say one thing. At the time, I, I, didn't, I didn't question it at all. I mean, I just assumed that, yeah, everybody has an abortion. What's, what's the big deal? Then the mail started coming in. And uh, what interested me was that the mail wasn't from crazies. The mail came from people who genuinely, genuinely felt that abortion was wrong mm -hmm. and gave the reasons why. And for a long time, I thought, oh, hell, I've really made a mistake and I shouldn't have done that show, even though, as you and I were speaking before, the actor does not say, this is my, this is my uh, feeling and this is my thought. You do what the writer says or what the director says. But... Um, I, I did a lot of soul-searching before, I must say, I ended up feeling the way I felt at the beginning, which is that I'm very pro-choice, and you have to be. But suppose, suppose you hadn't been, even though uh, the actor does the director or writer's bidding more often than not, uh, you seem to me to be a strong-willed person who might dig her heels in oh, on no, an issue or two been, and, and say, look, been, I cannot portray yeah. this, this is oh, too outside my beliefs. No, no, I would, I would definitely have done that. I would definitely have done that. I mean, uh, like, I will, uh, I will not wear fur anymore. And if someone, if, if, the art, uh, if the costume designer or the director says, no, it's important, that, I would say, I'm not going to do it. Mm -hmm. I simply am not going to do it. Uh, take me to the union. I'm, I'm just not going to do it.
Do you think that shows like All in the Family and Maud and, and some of the others that, in addition to being entertaining, uh, tried to make social statements oh, in the early 70s? No, that was Norman's whole idea. Yeah. Do you think they, they made a true impact on people's thinking? I'm sure or do. do you think they merely entertained them? Oh, no, no, no. They, they, had, they had to have made an impact. They had to. Oh, yes. Maybe more of an impact than the sober discussion of the issues on news programs. Oh, that's so dull. Because th th this is how yeah. you reach more yeah. people. This is how you come into their yeah. lives. If you entertain and if people are sympathetic to the character, the character can pretty well put anything across. God only, I mean, let's just hope that it's the right thing to put across. When that abortion episode ran, in fact, it was two episodes, wasn't it? Yes, we did it as a two-parter. A two-parter. You were actually shocked by the, the volume and intensity of, no of the idea. response. I had no idea. I had no idea. I truly was... Uh, I had just concerned myself, as I do now, it comes back down to that, the, the millions and millions of... I was talking about unwanted animals. Let's talk about unwanted, unloved children. I mean, so you save a lot. What, what, do, you, what do you bring a life into? You know, you... Uh, Mm -hmm. It's it's not good. What about the other issues? Interracial marriage or homosexuality? Nothing, I, I gather, that, that stirred the oh, storm. Oh, no, 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 no. You'd, occasionally you'd get a mail, uh, a letter from somebody telling you what you were and who you are and how dare you and we hope you die and, you know, but those were the crazies. Yeah. But uh, it's interesting how things have changed. Even since I started in 1972 with Maud, we recently, uh, we did a... Um, a segment of uh, Golden Girls last year where my son married a black woman and the reason I objected to it was that she was so much older than he was you know what I mean <laughs> which is great so, yes which is lovely which is lovely yeah so everything it's it's amazing when you look back at the shows we did ten years ago they're so old-fashioned now mm -hmm. I mean now anything goes you know did you get a lot of response from women when Maud was on the air? Oh, my where God. Why, why can't I be like you and treat my husband and, you know, have, what's the secret of your... Where well, a woman was more than... Drawing, every, everybody only sees what they want to see and what they look at. Am I right? Yeah, of course. They, they read into it. Yes. And they make you whatever suits they their want, purposes. Yes, yes. But we, we're all guilty of that. Here was a situation where a woman was more than equal which would have been a fine step forward. Yes, yes. The woman was clearly the dominant yes, a partner yes, here. She yes. was the smartest, she yes. was the more charismatic, she yes. was the stronger willed. Yes. And certainly the brighter one. Right. Yeah. That that was kind of that was kind <laughs> yeah. of shocking because if Yeah, after after the Donna Reed show and all that, yeah, you know, all those years. Past situation comedies, in fact, the the mother of the household might have been the smarter one but she was smarter in a gentle way that's she right. made the husband think that it was his idea that's right or that's or right. harriet gently nudged that's ozzy right. in the right Donna direction read make room for daddy yeah oh, no not too much make room yes even even mm -hmm. uh, danny she'll make room for daddy uh the uh, uh, father knows best i mean the whole thing the mother was always aside from the fact that she always wore earrings uh she she was not uh, she was not the strong one. She was not the one that the people came to for, uh, for advice. Who, she was always... who wrote Maud's theme song? Uh, Alan and Marilyn Bergman. Oh, yeah? And Dave Grusin, yes. Yeah, Alan and Marilyn Bergman wrote a lot of stuff for Streisand, didn't they? Didn't they write, oh. You Don't Bring Me Flowers and, and well, I mean, that stuff? They wrote stuff. The Way We Were. They wrote Windows well, that's, of My that's Mind. That's stuff for Streisand they, right there. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, they've written every, every single thing. And then there's Maud. And then... That yes. uncompromising, enterprising, anything but tranquilizing, right on Maud. Yes. That wasn't a bad theme song. No, it I kind of summed it up. You know, if you had been Isadora on Mars... Isadora was the first bra burner. Ain't you glad she showed up? I mean, the... the yeah, Isadora were... was the first bra... Yeah. Isn't, isn't that a quaint notion now? E even to people who would call themselves feminists, that's the idea of I mean. burning your that's bra... That's what I mean. That was 1972. And yeah. it's, it's like... Uh, it's like the old slavery days now or something. It's, t times have changed. So. But, you know, if you had been on Mars for three years and you came back and flipped on the set and you'd never seen Maud, <laughs> okay. all you have to do is hear the theme song and see the clips that accompanied yeah. it. It always ended with you striding very purposefully <laughs> oh, yes. to the door and swinging that door open. Yeah. You knew what this was about. Yes, yes, yeah. And then there's Maud. Then there's Maud.